Marx is a bit like, or Marx's capital is a bit like a mirror. Each person sees himself in it, or sees his views, or his prejudices. So therefore it's useful to see what Marx thought was the most important thing in the three volumes of Capital. And he wrote a letter to an American Marxist who happened to be, have been a um, uh, Union general named Wiedemeyer. And he said, the two most important things in my book are the twofold nature of commodities and my proof that interest, profit, and rent all come from surplus value. Now you might say, he said, what? Was, you know, was this in his sort of declining years? We aren't mentioning, he doesn't mention the rate of profit. He doesn't mention exploitation. He says, the t dual nature of commodities and what he called the holy trinity, rent, interest, and profit. Well, I don't want to try to explain what that means because I think it helps. You can go to people and it makes sense to them. The first point. I'm going to go to an expert you may not be familiar with. Scrooge McDuck. I don't know if you've ever read Donald Duck comic books. But there is one cartoon in which, um, in case you don't know, you may not know who Scrooge McDuck is. He's the world's richest duck. Um, he uh, has a son named, uh, he has a nephew named Donald, who has three nephews named Huey, Dewey, and Louie, but they don't really come into the story. Okay, so Donald works for Scrooge. And he takes his, gets his paycheck on Friday. And he gets into his car and he drives to MacDuck Petrol Station and he buys his petrol. And then he goes to MacDuck Estate Agent and he pays his rent. And he goes to MacDuck Supermarket and he buys his food. And he gets home and he says to his nephew, I'm out of money. And so his nephew said, go to Uncle Scrooge and ask him for an advance on next week's salary. So Donald does. He goes to see his uncle. His Uncle Scrooge, could I have an advance on next week's salary? And Scrooge McDuck says, Donald, I don't understand you. I don't have any trouble keeping my money. Think about it. That is a deep cartoon. It's Marx's point about the two-fold nature of commodities. What does Scrooge McDuck do? He buys in order to sell. That is what a capitalist does. What do the rest of us do? We sell in order to buy. We sell our ability to work. We go to work. We get paid. We spend the money. We go back to work. Capitalist does something quite different. Capitalist begins with money. He purchases our ability to work. A product is produced, which capitalist then sells and makes a profit. Marx says something very interesting about that. I mean, forgive me, I was a professor for a long time. So professor, I said, well, that's very interesting. He says something very enlightening about that. He said, the worker is paid the full value of his or her commodity. Exploitation does not occur because workers are paid less than what they sell. The exploitation arises in production. 
The reason capitalists make profits is because the workers produce a useful object which is then alienated from them, becomes a property of the capitalists. And that, I said I'd be concise, I won't go into the theory of alienation, but that's where, uh, that's what it means uh, in Marx. Okay, now, the second point, from that same story of Scrooge MacDuck, we can see the working of the Trinity, interest, profit, and rent. The world we live in now is one in which there is a progressive, or would you say regressive, decline in productive labor. There's an argument among Marxists about uh, what is productive and what unproductive labor. The definition is productive labor is that labor which produces surplus value or it is that labor which produces profit, whatever term you want. Finance is not productive. Finance is parasitic. So as the financial sector grows and the manufacturing, transport, utilities, they decline, for, this, for the system as a whole, there's a smaller and smaller amount of surplus value to distribute among the capitalists. And it becomes appropriated by the, by the financial sector. And it has another implication. Taxes are also generated from the exploitation of labor. So therefore, in order for the financial sector to expand its profits, it has to appropriate the value which would otherwise go to the state. So I very much doubt that George Orsman has read Marx, and I also doubt that he's read Donald Duck, though the latter is more likely than the former. Nevertheless, he is driven, if I may quote from another ancient economist, as if by an invisible hand to contract the state in order to enhance the profits of financial capital. I'll stop on that note. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to take them. One of the, one of the issues I have sometimes, and, and it's a bit of a shame for me that this discourse is perhaps overly Marxist in its, in its feel, its vibe, because I think the anti-austerity movement doesn't necessarily have to be based on old school leftist Marxist view, views. I think there are other ways uh, of approaching an anti-austerity stance uh, other than Marxism. But one of the problems I have when people start talking about capitalism, uh, I've never really heard a very succinct and persuasive definition of capitalism. Uh, is it wrong, for example, for an individual who's got a bit of spare money to invest that money in a business that business makes a profit, and that person benefits from that profit. Um, I've never heard a persuasive argument where that small micro example of capitalism, a person spending their capital and making a profit from that transaction, is necessarily a bad thing, and that there are many, many different strands of capitalism. You've got neoliberal Anglo-Saxon capitalism, for example, but you've got more Western European or Scandinavian, more social democratic strands of capitalism. And they're quite different in nature, and a lot of the ethics and the motivations and the role of the state is different in those different contexts. So I think it's quite unhelpful sometimes to overgeneralize about this term capitalism. Uh, I think that can confuse, as it 
as much as it is can enlighten. So I'd welcome your thoughts on, on that issue. Uh, now, raise a couple of issues. One is, let me look, definition of capitalism. Analysis or theory, whether it's in physics or it's in anthropology or whatever it is, the purpose of it is ab abstraction. You get a general point and then that helps you look at different manifestations of a phenomenon. So people are different, but still it's not difficult to define what a person is. Horses are different, but it's not difficult to define what a horse is. Capitalism, I'll give you Marx's definition, which I think is a very useful definition. Uh, and that is, uh, capitalism is, what put it most succinctly, self-expanding value, but wait, let me put it in non-Marxist terms. It is the hiring of wage labor, the rendering, render, the rendering of human working activity into a commodity. That's what I consider to be capitalism. Um, and the tension, you know, what, uh, within capitalism arises from the dual role of the worker as a producer and as a cost to the capitalist. Now, I think there are insights to be found from Marx. I think you'd go along to someone and say, what are capitalists about? I don't think capitalists are investors, basically. Do I have anything against people making money? Not if they pay their taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they don't stick it at offshore, but um, I think that um, you need to have a political system, an economic system, in which people are prevented from accumulating wealth and income to an extent that they have a power greater than other people. So somehow you have to have a mechanism of preventing the wealthy from dominating the political scene. And I think that the only way to do that is to severely limit how wealthy they can be. And you mentioned Sweden, that's a good example. I can remember, uh, first time I went to Sweden, 1970, a long time ago. And I uh, <coughs> visited a friend who uh, was a manager of a company and we were walking out and he says, see that woman there that she cleans uh, the place? He said, yep, my salary is 10 times hers. Well, think about that. What's that ratio now? That seems to me to be a capitalism more or less fit for human life. Thank you very much, John. I'm afraid we have to finish it there. Um, <laughs>